Hello and welcome to another episode of the Uncomplicated English podcast. Before we get started, as always, I'd like to remind you that the full transcript for this episode can be found for free on my website at uncomplicatedenglish.com, where I also give one-to-one conversational lessons. Today, we are going to learn about Halloween. Halloween is a very popular tradition that is celebrated around the world on the evening of the 31st of October. In the evening, children dress up and knock on the doors of houses and say, trick or treat. This phrase, trick or treat, is really a question. The children are asking the person who has answered the door to choose either a trick or a treat. The person has the choice to give these children sweets or if they choose not to give them sweets, then the children might play a trick on them. Quite often, the trick is throwing eggs or toilet rolls at their house. So, as you can imagine, most people choose to give the kids a treat. By the way, sometimes you'll hear people use the word sweet or the word candy. They both mean the same thing. Candy is a word that is used mostly in America, and sweet is used in most other English-speaking countries. It is widely believed that Halloween comes from an old Celtic festival. Originally, the Celtic people used this festival as a way to mark and celebrate the end of the summer. The Celtic people believed that during the winter our world became closer to another world that was filled with things like spirits and fairies. So, this meant that during the winter these spirits and fairies could come into our world. The Celtic people also believed that the spirits of their loved ones who had died came back to them on Halloween. So, to welcome these spirits into their houses, they left a space for them at the table and by the fire. Moving forward in time, by the 16th century, Halloween had changed a bit. People would go around to other people's houses dressed up and pretending to be spirits, and they sang songs in exchange for food. It was believed that if you gave these people food, then you and your family would have good luck for the rest of the year. However, if you didn't give them food, it was believed that for the rest of the year, you and your family would have bad luck. People also carried around pumpkins that had been hollowed out and had a candle placed inside as a way to ward off evil spirits. The verb to ward off is another way of saying to scare away. Also, when I say that the pumpkins had been hollowed out, that means that the pumpkins had been cut open at the top and the inside of the pumpkin had been removed. Christianity has had a large influence on Halloween. Halloween is the night before the Christian festival, which is called All Saints Day. This is a day when Christians celebrate the lives of all the saints. On this day, They say thank you to God for the life and the death of these saints. Traditionally, Christians would have 
a big feast the night before All Saints Day on the 31st of October. A feast is a very big meal. By the 12th century, the festival had changed a little, and it was now also a time to pray for people that had recently died and whose souls still had not arrived in heaven. Some people now began to dress in black and the church bells were rung for the souls of people in purgatory. Some Christians believe in a place called purgatory. Purgatory is the place between heaven and hell. They believe that when someone dies, their soul goes there, where it is cleansed so that it is pure enough to enter into heaven. During this time, people also baked little cakes, which were called soul cakes. Poor people used to go to the houses of richer people, and they would pray for the souls of their loved ones in exchange for these soul cakes. This is believed to be the origin of trick or treating. People also believed that on Halloween night, the souls of the recently dead were still on earth, and that some of them wanted to hurt people that were still alive and get revenge. To get revenge is when someone hurts or does something negative to another person who has hurt or done something negative to them in the past. So, to hide themselves from these souls, many people dressed up as ghosts and demons so that they would not be recognized. These days, Halloween for most is no longer a religious event. It is more an evening of fun and a good excuse to eat lots of sweet and unhealthy food. However, some Christians are not happy about this and argue that it no longer celebrates the life of the saints and instead celebrates and trivializes evil. When we say that something trivializes something, this means that it makes it seem less important or less of a threat. So when these people say that Halloween trivializes evil, they are trying to say that it makes evil seem less of a threat. However, on the other hand, there are still many Christians that see Halloween as a fun and harmless event. Halloween is celebrated in different ways in different places. For example, often when we think of Halloween, we think mostly of how it is celebrated in America, where people go to different houses saying trick or treat and being given sweets. In other countries, like Ireland and Scotland, often people also have a bonfire and set off fireworks. A bonfire is a very big fire. In Mexico, they celebrate a festival which is called Dia de Muertos, which means Day of the Dead. During this festival, they celebrate the lives of their ancestors. They set up an altar with food and pictures of their loved ones that have passed away. The food is seen as an offering to the spirits of their loved ones who have returned to see their families. That is all for today. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you have enjoyed today's episode. Let me know how you celebrate Halloween in your country. As always, I'd like to remind you that the full transcript for this episode 
can be found for free on my website at uncomplicatedenglish.com where I also offer one-to-one conversational English lessons. Thank you very much for listening.